Hey, what's up, it's Figure Hunter, and today I have a review for something that has taken me a long time to sort of put together in my head and a lot of research, so a lot of work. Today we're gonna to talk about aerobic versus anaerobic impact on your body and to really look at what is CrossFit in the aerobic versus anaerobic spectrum based on what those two items mean. And let me say out of the gate, and I'll probably say it a few times, I am not an expert. I read a bunch of articles, watched a bunch of videos, and it's still actually kind of hard to disseminate exactly how to break down CrossFit on the aerobic versus anaerobic spectrum. I had a couple of uh, people comment on something that I was doing on the training load tracking. Uh, that different, you know, Koros looks at anaerobic versus aerobic, Garmin looks at anaerobic versus aerobic, but they do it in opposite spectrums or in opposite results. So it, it brought up some just discussion about it. And so it made me think, well, what is aerobic versus anaerobic? So if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I've got a bunch of content out. I uh, pre-ordered the Fitbit Charge 5. The Vertix 2 is supposed to be coming in. The Whoop 4.0, I've ordered it in two different methods so I can try to get it the fastest way possible. And I've got a bunch of tidbit reviews, some you know different product stuff that's coming in. So lots of stuff to get out there. And the long-term training review, like the training load review for Coros, Garmin, and Polar and Sunto is coming out next week. I wanted to put in the full six weeks because there's a lot of information that I'm seeing is valuable and different nuances of each of the different platforms that is worthwhile. So I'm taking the full length of time to do so. So with that, and again, I'm not an expert. Let me say that again. What is anaerobic workout versus aerobic workout and how does it relate to a CrossFit Metcon or a CrossFit Watt or a CrossFit session? Take a look at these two results on a couple of the different devices, with Coros and with Garmin, that look at both of those things and track it. And then I'll, I'll, we'll talk this about This is a workout it. where there was bench press in the beginning, but the Metcon was assault bike, kettlebell swings, and burpee box jump overs. Um, for rounds on the end with short break in between. And you can see that the Garmin gave it a high aerobic output with a lower anaerobic and a load of 181. I think the recovery was like 31 hours. Um, and then you can see the Koros gave it a lower training load overall, 129. But you can see on the bottom that the anaerobic work was 4.1 out of 6, so high percentage and a lower aerobic workout. But you look at the workout and you know there was some higher output on the bench presses and there was some pause in between the sets of um, assault bike and kettlebell swings and burpee box jump overs, but this is where the differences lie continually with the Koros output of the workout evaluation versus the Garmin output of the workout evaluation. So high aerobic or high anaerobic versus Garmin's high aerobic. So we can see that they each gave different results. Garmin gave high aerobic impact. Koros gave high anaerobic impact. And so I started to look at what it calculates as aerobic and anaerobic and what are the two differences. So here's just the simple summary, again, I'm not an expert, of how I broke it down. So aerobic simply means that you're living off of oxygen to keep your body moving forward, to keep your exercise going, to keep your, your specific movement continuing on. You're requiring your oxygen. It's using oxygenated blood, requires the oxygen to burn fat and carbs as fuel. So the fuel is the oxygen. And anaerobic, it literally means it's without. So aerobic literally means with oxygen. And anaerobic means without oxygen. So it does not require oxygen. It's more intense. Instead of relying on oxygen as fuel, it relies, there's not enough ways that the oxygen can keep up with the intensity of that motion and that workout must pull from glycogen stored in the muscles. So aerobic, living on oxygen, pulling in oxygen, relying on oxygen fuel cells, uh, fuel source, anaerobic, relying on glycogen from the muscles. Great, well, what does that mean? I mean, you know, obviously we could say, okay, well, CrossFit is probably, you can't really br breathe fast enough. Uh, so aerobic is defined, and this is the thing that I kept getting in videos, which doesn't answer the question is where does CrossFit fit in the spectrum? Aerobic is typically defined as greater than 60 seconds. 
you know, and it is has been described as, you know, maintaining heart rate zones one, two, and three, which for me is less than 140 or 143 beats per minute, is in the aerobic zones. And they even have said that you can talk while you're doing the activity. Well, I can't talk in most of Metcons. I actually get mad when somebody tries to give me coaching and I have to respond like, please stop. Anaerobic in all these videos is described as greater than, uh, I'm sorry, less than 60 seconds and typically 90 to 120 seconds maximum. And I thought, well, great, that doesn't answer the question because Metcons are, you know, 15 to 20 minutes or 9 to 12 or whatever they are. But it's described as intense short burst. Using fast twitch muscles, you feel the lactic acid build up. And it's typically, they describe as if you're looking at a heart rate zone, zones four and five. So therefore greater than 140 beats per minute. And after that, after that intense, your body has to use inhaled oxygen to break down the glucose and the fatty acids built up in the muscles. So again, no clear answers. No clear answers for what to do as far as like, you know, okay, so we're not going for 90 to 120. You know, are we living off all of our possible glycogen in our muscles and not using any oxygen or burning any carbs and fats? And so in trying to reckon this and looking at all these different videos, I found a video that I feel like actually describes, and this is not an expert opinion, because guess what? I'm not an expert. This is what I've been, this video is sort of very short. It describes what I think is actually happening. Let's take a look. This graph. In this example of high intensity intervals, the total energy demand is represented by the green area. In the case of the last three intervals, the total energy needed is greater than what can be supplied by aerobic sources alone. Therefore, the striped area represents a measurement of the anaerobic work done. So I think this is exactly what is happening. I think in the intense burst, and actually you're just looking at a Metcon, you just sort of stay up. Your heart rate is just up, you know? Like we saw in that one workout that compares Chorus and Garmin and the aerobic versus anaerobic, I think that you're living off of a base of aerobic intensity or oxygen, 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 but also burning all these different, you know, glycogens from the muscles to keep up with the intensity. I'm not an expert, so I don't know, but I, I feel like that accurately describes it because if you look at the video, I believe that the baseline is coming from oxygen. Our oxygen is supplying the baseline of our need in the Metcon and the more intensity and the higher it's, it's sucking energy from the muscles. So I feel like we're burning both sources at the same time. And I do feel like we're burning the base source as the aerobic our fitness level, and then the top source, because I think we we actually learn to to operate on the lactate threshold, you know, like right at the burn, you know, the best example, so like before you really hit your muscles like fully filled with lactic acid and you can't do another rep, I think about handstand push-ups where, you know, I mean, the example of handstand push-ups is, is once they're gone, they're gone in a workout. You have to be really careful not to overburn because if you overburn, then your muscles are full of lactic acid and you can't do another rep or it takes a lot longer, of like 45 seconds of recovery to be able to do another rep. Even, even if you think about doing a sprint, if you sprint full out sprint for 400 meters, you cannot do much of anything after that, um, at least without taking a some sort of a break. So that is what I believe, and because you know your your legs are full of lactic acids, your lungs are completely on fire, and I think that is more of a description of a true purely anaerobic workout because you're going for full blast, and then your your body is like ripped everything out of its muscles that it can and it has to rebuild it has to use the oxygen to you know work through the fatty acid build up in the muscles so in crossfit i think we learn to stay away from that that so i think we are burning oxygen and glycogen to get through a workout so that's the way basic summary is i do think we are crossing the spectrum of both. I do think we are we are hitting, I mean, I don't think it summarizes down to simple formula of, well, if you're in zone four and five, you are only doing anaerobic work. Because I think on a 20 minute Metcon, even if you're rotating through like a salt bike or 400 meter intervals, you're not really sprinting, but your body is like, exhausted the whole time. You're basically on the edge of some lactic acid buildup, you're, uh, the lactic, threshold so you're on the edge of not getting too redlined to where you're going to crash 
and you're sucking in as much oxygen as you possibly can. So I think both things are happening and that's more of a felt thing. So again, I'm not an expert, but I do think that that one video summarized that your baseline is aerobic and then the more intense periods are the anaerobic and you're accomplishing both at the same time. So, you, you know, when a couple of little side notes, one thing I, I didn't really have full awareness of with aerobic workouts. So if you're staying in like the aerobic zone, like the 140, so your zone three, two or one, that's where you're actually living on fat more purely to get through the workout. So low heart rate for a prolonged period of time will just sort of live on fat stores if you want to lose fat, which everybody, you know, I think is a great idea for me. So in the anaerobic, the afterburn effect, the amount of afterburn that we get from an anaerobic, more intense, or one of those, or just basically like a Metcon where you're, you're living in the edge of break, physical muscular breakdown, it actually builds up a long period of time that your body has to like recover, which we've all felt. You know, it's like the epoch, the excess post-oxygen, uh, post-exercise oxygen consumption, which we can see listed. You know, it is sort of like the training load number on garments, but you can see the actual epoch listed on um, the Sunto app, you know, with the Sunto breakdown. But it's basically the amount of time that your body has to like take in oxygen just to recover your muscles, recover your body from the intensity of the workout. So it's like the afterburn effect. The higher the training load, the higher the epoch, the more intense, you know, it's a real gauge for the intensity of the workout, but the longer the period of time that you'll have an afterburn effect burning, you know, just excess calories, just to sort of have your body sort of reset to center from the intensity of the workout. So with that, that is the comparison of anaerobic versus aerobic type of training effect and type of impact from a workout, from a CrossFit workout. How does it relate to CrossFit from what I could glean at least to sort of share the summary of information and how it might relate to CrossFit so that you have some baseline. The whole point of this was just to prepare for the training load, full analysis, Garmin, Polar, Sunto, and um, Coros, training load analysis from what they are putting out next weekend as I get through the end of the sixth week. With that, thanks so much for watching. It's the Figure Hunter.